There's always one. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mike. On behalf of Board of Directors of the Long Island Capital Alliance, I'd like to welcome you to our Cybersecurity Capital Forum. I am Neil Kaufman, the Chairman of the Board of LIGO. I'm also the Managing Member and Founder of Kaufman & Associates, Long Island's Corporate and Securities Law Firm. LICA is Long Island's leading nonprofit capital formation and business development organizations. Over the last three decades plus, we have assisted dozens of local companies in raising hundreds of millions of dollars of growth capital, and we're very proud of the role that we have played in the economic development of Long Island. Today, we will feature presentations by cybersecurity companies which have connections to the Long Island region and are building businesses around innovative technologies and services that provide exciting growth opportunities and tremendous opportunities uh, to generate great returns on investments for their investors. Our keynote speaker will be Lee Noriega. I'll introduce him shortly. After that, I will introduce Michael DiStefano, who will in turn introduce each of our presenting companies. They will each make an eight minute presentation followed by two or three questions and answers. Um, our investor panelists will have first crack at those, uh, asking those questions, so if you don't get called on, please don't be offended. If, if, uh, if they don't have any further questions, we sometimes will then be able to open up questions to the floor. After that, I will moderate uh, our investor panel with our three panelists, we'll have some Q&A with them, and we'll wrap up and, be, and have you out of here by 11 a.m. I would like to especially thank our sponsors. Uh, with us this morning is George Licarezos from Carter, DeLuca, Farrell, and Schmidt, a leading intellectual property law firm on Long Island. Eric Allstatter from Eisner Amper, large regional accounting firm. National accounting firm, I guess now, right? International. International. Worldwide dominant. <laughs> uh, as is BDO, another one of our sponsors. Uh, Michael DiStefano from Ferrara DiStefano and Caparoso. No one is here from Cat Sapper and Miller. I don't know what happened to Corey. I think he's traveling today. Uh, normally, Corey Massell, the president of Leica, is here representing his firm, Cat Sapper. I'm here representing Kaufman and Associates. I see Seth Rubin here today from Moore Hawk and Hamroff. I don't see Dennis, but I guess you know he'll be I here next time. Oh, there you go. Um, New York Institute of Technology and the Suffolk County IDA are also sponsors, as is the Corridor. I see Barbara here this morning from the Corridor. Uh, Access Wire, Executive Strategies Group, and ListNet. We're blessed with Peter and Paul from <laughs> ListNet here this morning. Good to see you guys. So today is a really kind of a special day for us because we're, we're really especially excited um, to see our friends uh, back with us again from Advanced Convergence Group. Um, ACG, presenting under a different name uh, a few years ago, raised $12 million from one of our invitees tripled the size of that company, and you'll hear all about it uh, from David when he presents in a few minutes. But to us, this is really um, emblematic of what we are about, helping a, an emerging local growth company raise a significant amount of capital to grow exponentially, and then come back and raise the next amount of capital to grow even further, hire more people, and you know, become another great Long Island corporate success story. So, uh, you know, that's just really exciting for us. Uh, ACG is also a ListNet member, um, and, uh, you know, Peter has been helpful uh, in, in making that connection over the years. So, uh, you know, it's just very gratifying for us, all of us in Novel Leica, to, to uh, see and live these kind of experiences. At this time, I'm, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, Lee Noriega. Lee is a founding member of Oxford Solutions, a global managed securities provider that monitors manages customers' security operations 24-7. Their mission is to deliver the right mix of people, processes, and technologies to educate, inform, and protect businesses 
from cyber threats. We have spent more than 30 years as a cyber security professional for the government and in commercial organizations. After retiring from the U.S. Navy as a network security officer in, in the mid-90s, Lee spent time as a contractor for the FBI, identifying and tracking cyber attackers around the world, like maybe Russia. In 1997, Lee was recruited by Nortel Networks to help de develop and deliver their emerging cyber product portfolios. Prior to launching Oxford, Lee developed cyber intelligence software for an Israeli-based technology company. As an acclaimed technologist and regular speaker, Lee is dedicated to raising public awareness of today's cyber threat landscape and education on how it, organizations can defend themselves against these threats. His expertise in penetration and social engineering provides new insights to today's cyber threats and organizations of all sizes. So with special thanks to our, friend, our, our, our good buddy Vladimir Putin for making cybersecurity so top, topical and timely, I'd like to at this point introduce Lenor Lino Yevna. So, Mr. Kaufman, thank you, and good morning. Again, my name is Lee Noriega, and I'm the Executive Vice President at Oxford Solutions. I'd like to thank the Long Island Capital Alliance for inviting me here this morning to talk and kick off your Cybersecurity Capital Forum. So, for the last 35 years, I've been intimately involved in almost every aspect of cybersecurity, from penetration testing to threat detection to product development and even to raising capital for new and emerging technologies. I've worked for the military uh, and the U.S. government, large and small commercial organizations, and I've also been the CEO of my own company. But I'm not here to talk about my accomplishments. I want to take a, a few minutes to talk about what I learned in the last 35 years in the cybersecurity industry and what companies can do right now to ensure their success. And I think that we can all agree in the last few years, emerging threats and cyber attacks have grown at an alarming rate. The irony of it is, though, is that we see it on the news all the time, it's starting to become a numbing effect. We know it's happening a lot more, but we just uh, we start not thinking about it like we should. We can attribute this growth to a couple things. One, the type of attacks that are happening today. Uh, it used to be targeted attacks. Now the number of opportunistic attacks has outgrown or outnumbered the number of targeted attacks. There's been an explosive growth in the number of attackers, not only from nation states, but from hacktivists, from terrorists, but from our largest group, the amateur community. There's emerging technologies like IoT devices, which are now providing new platforms for attackers to use uh, for an attack vector. That wasn't even available to them three years ago. So we look at emerging technologies today, as things evolve, we start trying to identify what is the next platform for attackers to use. And lastly, there's a lack of cybersecurity professionals in the marketplace. There's a lack of cybersecurity professionals to develop new and emerging technologies. And there's also a lack of cyber professionals to provide those services that are so desperately needed. By 2019, there will be a global shortage of two, at least 2.2, excuse me, 2.2 million cyber professionals in the marketplace. So the need for cybersecurity professionals today is paramount. It is playing catch up now. A lot of the universities are just now starting to provide cybersecurity degrees. Uh, it's hard to get people out of the government. The government space is a very easy place to work. And if you have college students at home, you might want to encourage them to move into this field because it's uh, wide open right now. So we're starting to rely on cyber technologies more and more to help fill in the gaps with the people shortage by utilizing learning or machine learning, automation, advanced detection techniques, to quickly identify and defend against these emerging threats. Unfortunately, the bad news is our adversaries are doing the same thing. They're using the same technologies that we're developing to detect them in order to circumvent and get into uh, secure networks or secure boundaries. So in essence, the cyber war has already started. We keep hearing about a full-on cyber war coming in the next few years. It's already here. Many organizations the other problem we have is many organizations haven't even started budgeting yet for cybersecurity. 
what's really driving them today is what they hear in the news, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and also regulatory compliance. We find new regulatory companies popping up where there was once none uh, regulatory body. There's a lot of money to be made in regulation and enforcement and remediation, and that's why it's growing so fast. The latest one that we're dealing with today is the New York State Department of Financial Services regulation that has outlined new cybersecurity practices for businesses in the financial sector or businesses that fall under their guidance. Next year, it'll be Europe and the UK under the GDPR, the General Data Regulation Protection Act. Uh, even if you do business here in the United States and you have a presence overseas, where you do business with a company overseas, you, you may still be subject to the GDPR Act. Historically, cybersecurity's had some bad connotations around it. Uh, typically, because organizations feel that it's too expensive, solutions are too hard to implement, and it limits the productivity of the workforce. And I believe that companies and vendors who provide cyber products and services are partly responsible for that negative connotation because we make cyber, com we make cyber security more complex than it really needs to be. We really need to think about the basics of what we're trying to do. And that's really understanding where your critical data sits, building perimeter security around that data, and in monitoring what, what that data is being used for, whether it's being used legitimately or it's being used somebody's taking it or stealing it. As solution providers, I believe that we have a moral responsibility to ensure our clients are intelligently spending to protect and defend against new and existing cyber attacks. I met with a CIO a couple years ago of a large accounting firm, so uh, I didn't see him here, so I should be safe. And he was bragging to me about how he had spent $2 million on all these security appliances and, and applications and how wonderful everything was. So I asked him, I said, how many people in your organization are actually looking at the logs or managing and configuring these devices? And he told me one. I had to inform him that he wasted $2 million. Because if you can't, if you can't manage your appliances or your solutions, if they're too complex, then you just wasted your money. So we really need to think about intelligence spending. How are you going to spend your money to raise your security posture? He did ask me to leave right after I told him that. <laughs> Oxford Solutions has been my third startup company and by far my most successful. What I've learned this go around has been instrumental to the success of Oxford Solutions. I spent years pitching my solutions to the VC community and admittedly, I missed the mark because I wasn't focused on what mattered most. So let me share about 10 key points that I've learned in the last 35 years. Number one is don't boil the ocean. Focus on what your company does great and provide a great service or product. A lot of times we try to capitalize and do everything and we fall short. <laughs> Identify what makes you different from everyone else. What are your differentiators? What makes your solution and company better than the other guys? Additionally, if you can set yourself apart, you can set the bar for pricing on your product or service. Number three was surround yourself with very talented people and retain them. The cyber industry has already become very competitive and great people are hard to find. The credibility of your people and the service they provide to your company is your differentiator. Now I know every company says they have the brightest and the best people in the world, but really, are they really the best and the brightest? Everyone in your organization should be an A player because they are the face of your company. Number four for me was, say what you do and do what you say. I've always used the formula, customer experience equals customer value. If you provide a great customer experience, you, you in turn will get a great customer value out of it. A customer will pay what you command as long as you can demonstrate the value of your product or solution. <clears throat> if they balk at the price, then you have not clearly demonstrated the value of your solution. Number five, delight your customers. My mentor, a guy by the name of Michael Pascucci told me always, and I mean always, under promise and over deliver. You will exceed your customers' expectations every time. And at Oxford Solutions, we have done just that. We've delighted uh, customers, and delighted customers will tell other customers. Number six, take and keep your customers' pulse. Stay in front of your customers as much as you can, because if you're not doing it, someone else is. Number seven, be able to communicate your offering in plain language. Your audience has to be the decision maker. And unfortunately, not all decision makers can talk tech. 
If they want to get deeper in a technical discussion, they'll tell you. Number eight was listen to what the client is saying and, and be honest and forthright with them. Sometimes I'm the salesperson's worst nightmare because I am brutally honest. But customers often tell me they want a certain service. They'll, they'll say to me, I would like a pen test. And I'll ask them why. And they go, I don't know. I mean, because everybody else is doing it. That's not an intelligent way to spend your money if you haven't tightened up the hatches on everything else. They usually throw out buzzwords and things that they want and they have preconceived notions of what they want. But every company is different and every solution is different and you should be able to be scalable and be light on your feet with it. Number nine, <clears throat> educate your clients. Don't sell through fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So in my second startup, which we catered mostly to the three-letter organizations like the FBI, the CIA, and the DHS, we had this habit of going to these FBI seminars because I was, had very close relationships with the FBI. And we would stand out there after the FBI did their seminar and pass out business cards because we were selling through fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It was a bad mistake. We weren't very successful at it. Most organizations are very tech savvy today, and they'll see right through this if you're trying to sell them through fear. If you cannot properly educate your customers about your product or solution, you won't get anywhere. But if you can, you'll have a client for life. And last but not least, know your customer's business. If you don't know who you're selling to and what their challenges are, you won't be able to deliver them a viable solution. So I mean, you probably have heard all these things before, but the difference is most companies don't do all of them. Some don't do any of them. So at present, your solution, oops, excuse me, went too fast. As you present your solution to our distinguished panel, please keep what I said in mind. Thank you for everyone who has attended this morning, and good luck to the presenters, and thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Lee. At this time, I'd like to introduce and bring up to the stage Michael DiStefano. Michael is a director of Leica and is an owner in the full service accounting firm of Ferrara, DiStefano, and Caparuso. They handle all facets of accounting, including but not limited to tax planning and preparation of tax returns for businesses, individuals, and estates, compilation review and audits of financial statements, forensic accounting, business planning, and consulting. Michael will introduce each of our presenting companies here this morning. I hope I can read as fast as Neil can. He's, he's very good. He taught me this. Anyway, the first uh, the first company that's presented is uh, ACG. It's Advantage Convergent Group. They ma they're manufacture of enterprise class IP video management and command center software applications, uh, and they're serving the physical security solutions solutions that bridge to the Internet of Things to purpose built HD audio video recording <coughs> solutions for education law enforcement, and health care. We have David Antar here, uh, who's the founder, that's going to be presenting for them. So, David. Thank you. I uh, really appreciate everybody having us here today. And we're actually pretty excited to be presenting some pretty amazing technology. Uh, I'll give you a little background on our company and, and why we're here. Um, we formed ACG back in 2012, Advanced Convergence Group, and it was formed for the single purpose of bringing all the sub-companies I created, I was kind of a serial entrepreneur, bringing a whole bunch of different companies uh, to Long Island to uh, do security, technology, and things related to science education. In 2012, we were very fortunate to be able to get funding through the Long Island Capital Alliance, and they were, they were terrific in doing that, that we were able to get $12 million funding into the company, it allowed us to grow our business and bring it to the next level. And uh, those are the three companies that are here. Uh, IP Video actually develops video surveillance technology that we sell through dealers all over the world. Uh, we do some pretty amazing uh, technology related to capturing video and command and control centers. A Plus Technology is one of the largest systems integrators in the metropolitan area doing very, very large uh, physical security implementations. Uh, as well as audiovisual and some other technologies that we do. And A plus STEM is, uh, if those of you aren't familiar with STEM, it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, <coughs> and Math. And that's become the number one topic for the federal government to get schools, uh, to get kids wanting to become engineers and scientists so they can do things like we do. 
Uh, so it kind of is the full ecosystem of getting kids interested in STEM and science. And uh, that those are the people that we hire. We hire them as interns and then eventually uh, hire them full time. So um, basically, we were established uh, in 2015. As I said, uh, the actual company, though, is 30 years old since I started. We started in uh, 1988, is when the actual company was formed. And we were able to uh, take this company from a technology company into the security world. And uh, we found the convergence of IT, audio, visual, and security. And for years, people thought we had no focus as an organization. They didn't realize that IoT was coming and the convergence of all these different technologies. And we stayed true to our vision of this all coming together and allowed our companies to grow uh, very significantly over the years. Um, we had an unusual situation where uh, part of the money that was funded uh, in that $12 million round of funding came from the Small Business Administration. And the equity partner that we were dealing with at the time, it was a great partner, ended up going into receivership with the SBA and gave us an opportunity to buy back our ownership at cents on the dollar. So now we're 100% privately owned again, and uh, we are looking for an additional round of funding right now. Uh, we do a huge amount of R&D as a company, and we're known as a national expert on safe schools. Uh, we're in hundreds of school districts, as well as an expert on smart cities. Uh, we do some very interesting things in that space also. The unique thing that we were able to do from 2012 to now is triple the size of the company. We took it from a $10 million company a year to this year we'll be doing $30 million as a company. So we've had some successful uh, outcomes to that investment that originally came into us. Um, we have an unusual board of directors also. We have a, kind of a, a who's who of people. Uh, Bob Cattell um, is uh, uh, one of our board members. He was the uh, uh, CEO of Keyspan. Uh, Russ Arts was the founder of Computer Associates. And Yakov Shamash, who's the uh, Vice President of Economic Development at Stony Brook, uh, and Dean of Engineering. Uh, they've been very, very instrumental in the growth of our company. We put that uh, board together once we got the funding into the organization. And these are some of our customers. We're probably one of the largest providers of IP video surveillance into K-12 schools in New York State. We're in hundreds of school districts. Uh, and some of them are very large enterprises with 20, 30, 40 buildings in them. Uh, we do a lot of townships, fire departments, police departments. Uh, we built a huge command center for Suffolk PD uh, that's going to allow them to create a public-private partnership and be able to bring cameras tied into their 911 center back to uh, police headquarters during an emergency. Um, we do things like Fordham University, Stony Brook, Suffolk Community College, uh, as well as 14 of the Cooney schools in New York City. Uh, so in education, we're known as an expert in that. We also do things like the U.S. Navy. Uh, every Navy ship that's built right now has our video technology on it. We developed a custom interface <coughs> for them. Um, and then uh, we do uh, everything from Brookhaven National Lab to MacArthur Airport. Uh, so very diverse in the things that we're able to do as an organization. These are our products that we do under one of our divisions, IP Video. And one is a video recording platform. We actually have two different platforms. One is called Mosaic and Century VMS. Another one is C3 Fusion, and that's really, to us, it's a flagship product. That's what's the future. It's an Internet of Things manager. It takes many disparate sources of information, brings them into a single piece of software that allows them to manage. And it's alerts from a 911 center, from ShotSpotter, from a cyber attack, uh, can actually create an alert, from a social media alert. We're actually a finalist right now for the NFL to tie all 31 stadiums back to Park Avenue. And the main thing is about social media monitoring, executive tracking. So it really goes way beyond physical security into being able to tie a lot of other resources together. It's an incredible intellectual <coughs> property uh, that we believe is the future uh, in being able to link all these things that are unmanageable into a single unified system. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, Nomad HD, which is a portable camera we purposely developed for the Port Authority Police. And then AV Fusion is a lecture capture reporting system uh, that we actually implemented at ListNet. And it's an unusual thing that allows you to take a security camera and be able to do perfectly synchronized audio video recordings from that. So I'm going to jump real quick into a short video for you. A new state-of-the-art security facility on Long Island is aiming to keep your kids safe. Yeah, this is quite a story. They're doing it with the help of highly trained emergency responders and high-tech cameras that are keeping an eye on some schools 24-7. Take a look at this. This is a device that IP Video is going to be marketing into the school districts. David Antar is the president of IP Video Corporation. The company just launched its first global fusion center at its Bayshore headquarters. They offer security monitoring protection to many industries worldwide, including schools. This robot is part of the team. 
during an emergency or during uh, nighttime hours, it becomes part of a roving security guard. At the center, Antar says high-resolution cameras are monitored 24-7 in real time by off-duty and retired police officers and former military personnel. So as an example, if a fire alarm zone went off, we have the cameras that are associated with that fire alarm zone and be able to do a visual verification and verify the severity of the situation. Dr. Alan Groveman is the former superintendent of Connecticut Central School District where the security system is in place. He says it is a valuable component of overall school security. Even now, the classrooms are empty for the summer. The object in this day and age is prevention. In an emergency, the information can be quickly shared with those who need it to help save lives. Uh, the market is growing at an incredible rate uh, right now, compound annual uh, growth rate right now of 32.6%. Uh, IoT is growing exponential and it's growing very, very high multiples on companies that are involved in the IoT space and that's really where our sweet spot is right now as an organization. Uh, our growth channel right now is really growing at the dealer channel worldwide. Uh, we already do things across the country and some projects across the world, but our, our need for capital right now is to continue growing the business at a very fast rate uh, by additional investments into it. And this is uh, basically our technology, C3 Fusion, um, and uh, basically shows a sample of an event happening right now. And if an event happens, it actually triggers live cameras to be triggered right over there, shows the event, and this is what can tie into a 911 center or some other uh, system. There's another example of an intrusion detection taking place, and basically goes through ours, filters, and gives them an actionable uh, item from there. And then we have a case management system that allows you to manage through all of those events and be able to uh, have an audit trail to the whole thing that you're doing here. Um, and from there, fine. This is also another product that we do, which is basically a way to bring that system to a handheld device and have an actual app that you can run and be able to trigger emergencies. This was actually developed by uh, Russ Arts's son from Computer Associates, actually developed this app, and we integrate this into our technologies. This is Suffolk PD's uh, command center that we built for them that we hope to be active very shortly. And uh, this is a success story about something that we did in the city of Bridgeport. Bridgeport is getting yeah. wired literally. Yeah, this surveillance command center will connect police to emergencies and progress, businesses, even private homes. Stock 61's Tony Josie shows us how it's done. The brand new $1 million Be Safe Security Command Center, a one-of-a-kind safety venture in Connecticut, which in addition to video safety can manage Bridgeport's many technologies. Everything from a door access system, to a building management system, to GPS tracking, to a panic button system. It's also emergency management, uh, snowstorms, hurricanes, that type of thing. Cameras from the City Safe Corridors program, which captured the tail end of this attempted abduction of a teen recently, are also integrated into this command center. We eventually want to expand it to all the schools throughout the city of Bridgeport. Um, we started with the high schools and we've rolled out four more this season. This could become a private and public partnership. The command center will be staffed and operational just after the first of the year. In Bridgeport, Tony Terzi, Fox. This is basically our revenues uh, over the period of time and our revenues are growing at a very fast pace right now. And uh, as I said, we took from 10 to $30 million. Uh, with that investment, and we're now bringing it to the next level, and uh, we'll be bringing this company to a 50 to 100 million dollar company in the not too distant future. Um, our profit, uh, although we invested that money, we showed uh, negative profits for the last three years. That's been turned around in this year, the first quarter profitable, and we expect to have a profitable year, and kind of are taking it from there. And this is basically the use of funds uh, that we're looking for right now is six million dollars for a 10 percent equity in our company. And use of funds is uh, basically for additional R&D, sales and marketing, as well as operating capital. Questions? <coughs> no questions. <laughs> There's got to be some. <laughs> yes. Specific uh, intellectual property that you have. And sure. Sort of, you know, how you would differentiate yourself from other players. You know, congratulations in terms of building out what you've done. Thank you. So uh, the two intellectual properties, uh, the main intellectual properties we have is C3 Fusion, which is that Internet of Things manager. It's kind of an unusual technology that basically can adapt into any industry. It's not just for security. It can actually go into healthcare, as an example, to manage critical care patients. So it's uh, really a future technology that takes all this confusion of all these different sources of information and brings them into a manageable solution that filters and prioritizes things. The other intellectual property is AV Fusion, which is a lecture capture recording system that we developed 
that there's nothing like it on the planet, and we're able to actually put that into every college university, uh, as well as all types of other places like police interview rooms. We actually did the San Jose Police Department with that, the 10th largest city in the country. Yes? So two questions. Going back to the three organizational structure, how does that leverage into what you're trying to do as a holding company? And the second question is, you talked about fueling your growth. Can you tell me what the company looks like at $100 million? Sure. So uh, first part, uh, the companies interact with each other. A-plus is a dealer for IP video, but we have dealers throughout the rest of the country, so the companies do work very closely with each other. Uh, STEM Solutions, A plus STEM or A plus Mobile Solutions is a company that actually uh, is a little bit different from the rest of the companies but leverages a lot of our technology to get kids interested and wanting to become engineers and technologists but we eventually intend to spin that company off and we're also in negotiations to do that at some point spin that company off and then focus on the security and physical security and cyber security side of things. Uh, I'm sorry, your second question was? Uh, what does the company look like at so at $100 million, we will have a, uh, we'll be what's called a, a super regional integrator as A+, plus, doing large implementations. We're about to close uh, Sotheby's. We should be closing them uh, next week to do all of the security for North America. So we're starting to expand from being a local regional player to a much larger national, and we've already done some international projects. So we really see uh, what we do expanding in a great way. Yes? When, when, when contracts over competitors, uh, what would you say are the key things that you're rewarded for the features of your platform? Sure. We're, we're always looking at being very visionary in the security industry, so we have an incredible reputation. Uh, There's a company called Access Communications that was acquired at a four-time multiple uh, by Canon for $2.8 billion. We were their first dealer in the United States when they invented the IP security camera. We've always been on the visionary forefront of where this technology is going. Um, so when we meet with customers and present that, we establish credibility very quickly. Uh, and they know that they're going to have the most innovative solutions going forward from a security perspective. The difference with us is that we started as an IT company, evolved into a security company. Most of the people who come from the security world don't understand the IT world like we do. So it's exactly correct. That's why we came up with the name Advanced Convergence, because we converge all those technologies together. Uh, but we tie that into our own intellectual property that brings us to a whole nother level. So the intellectual property is primarily blue? Yes. I, I, that's a funny because that's a term I use. It's glue that holds everything else together. How much of your revenue comes from integration versus product? So uh, right now, uh, our integration uh, revenue is probably uh, two thirds of our revenue. We spent the uh, original investment that we got into R and D. So over the last three years, that's why our, our numbers don't look great for the last three years. But we invested that money into R and D and developed our intellectual property, and now we're kind of on that hockey stick. You know, taking off in a very, very large direction. And at 100 million, what do you think that split is? Uh, it's still going to be uh, probably um, 50 50 at that point. Yeah. Okay, guys, but that's it. I'm getting evil. <laughs> 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 Anyway, the next, uh, the next presenter is going to be Gary Olson. He's from uh, uh, GTOP. Uh, it's the first anti-terrorism threat detection technology, connecting the dots between video, media, and all data types and formats. Um, using cognitive intelligence and advanced video technology as a preventive solution for public safety and national security. Here you go, Gary. Hello and thank you for Leica. And I guess I have to open up by saying I'm an alumni of New York Tech and my wife was a former Five Towns girl. So we're Long Island folks and I grew up on the city side of Floral Park if that counts. If anybody knows the region. And you'll forgive me while I have to go through somebody else's stuff. Yep. Okay. Uh, so we are uh, a preventative technology looking at threat detection and things like Manchester, London, Paris, and Brussels, unfortunately, is our marketing. And the amount of video, as we just looked at, is overwhelming the human's ability to analyze it, to look at it from a global and holistic perspective and determine whether something that happens in a textual or social space has any relevance to something that 
connects with something in visual space, a backpack on the floor. What's interesting is that many of the horrific events that have happened, happened in private spaces. So Paris was a nightclub. Manchester was a concert. We have energy that is protected by private security. So a lot of the safety and security in the preventative side, and something that I've learned recently is the difference between anti and counter. Counter means it happened. Anti is preventative. We are preventative. I have a little video that you can't see right now that I'm going to hit the enter button that will give you a little bit of perspective of what's under the hood, and then I will continue to explain what we're doing and why we've been told by people in law enforcement, uh, commercial security, and government that we're the first to come up with a solution like this that looks across the spectrum of different data sources and data points from an analytic perspective, relieving the pressure and act, making the decision-making process for actionable information very effective. All right. <clears throat> so we won't do the video. So we come from an interesting background. Um, my personal background is in broadcast television technology. So understanding video, how to handle video from the professional's perspective as opposed to maybe the computer perspective. So how do you align videos? How do you align video with data? How do you put into one environment a data set, video, information that may be unstructured from something like an email or even an Amber Alert? and look at it all together with artificial intelligence and the technologies that we're working with and the foundation of our technology is DARPA grade artificial intelligence being used by some of the drone programs and some of the other advanced programs along with award-winning video technology that understands how to manage video and organize it in a way that artificial intelligence can be applied across it to make it make sense. So, so similar, I think I, I don't know if he stole mine or I stole his, but there's too much data, there's too many data types, there's too many data formats. Even video comes in too many data formats. We're agnostic. We don't care. One of the things that happens, there's video that's being collected. Um, in a boil the ocean reference that was made earlier, you can't find everything that's going on everywhere on the planet. But if you know that you are supposed to look for something, once you find it, you can identify every place on the planet that it exists. The other problem that's been suggested to us by people that have suffered the problem is that in a large environment, there's many analysts. Sometimes they're in different places. These analysts won't know if they're looking at the same problem. Having a system that would alert the decision maker for a collaborative opportunity so that more than one analyst or the event could be combined so that only one individual is looking at it and using the artificial intelligence to enhance and augment what they're doing. The sector is, I'm a little bit more conservative, about 17 billion in looking at handling the volume of information that's out there. And this is a conservative estimate. In the private sector, there's about, and these are based upon market segments of hospitality, entertainment, energy, transportation, port security, this is all the commercial side, the government side is self-explanatory. <laughs> we don't plan on knocking on doors, we plan on partnering. We have a partner who specializes in providing the kind of technologies that require clearances.